Section 4.9 is going to be our last section in unit four. I'm giving this to you now because it will be useful for you. Um, this is a confusing concept. And I hope that by giving this to you now, you'll be able to uh, be a little bit more solid uh, with the redox reactions moving forward. So if we recall from 4.7, a redox reaction is going to involve the transfer of one or more electrons between chemical species. This is not something that we can really easily see or track, um, at least macroscopically. Um, so what we will need to do is we will need to use what are called oxidation numbers to track the transfer of electrons. Uh, some really nice mnemonic devices that are available um, to help us to remember. So in a redox reaction, we're going to have an oxidation and we're going to have a reduction. Okay, it, it is really two reactions that are happening at the same time that they work in conjunction with one another. Um, so an easy way of remembering how the electrons are going to behave I guess you could say we could use oil rig or Leo the lion says grr. Okay. So with oil rig, oxidation is lost. That means that uh, whatever we're talking about is losing the electron. Uh, the thing that is getting oxidized is losing. And then the thing that is getting reduced or the process of reduction um, is actually gaining an electron. Leo the lion says grr. Uh, tells us that the loss of electrons means that it is oxidation. The gain of electrons means that it is reduction. Okay, so let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. So we definitely know that uh, combustion at this point is a redox reaction. So we, we have the combustion of methane here. So we would want to put in the oxidation numbers for every single atom here, okay? We would want to keep track of the electrons for uneven sharing. So uh, the electronegativity is very, very important here. If there is a difference in electronegativity, that is what leads to oxidation numbers. All right, so again, we're, we're going to use this uh, redox reaction for the combustion of methane as our example. Anytime we have uh, just an atom, okay, or anytime that we have identical atoms that are bonded together, then there will be uh, an oxidation number of zero. Anytime electrons are being shared equally or they're equally divided, uh, there will be zero as our oxidation number. But if we have different items, we need to assign uh, the shared electrons to one of those uh, atoms. And it's going to be the one that has the greater electro, the, uh, the greater electron affinity, right? So in this case, we would have to decide whether that is the carbon or whether that is the hydrogen. And then over here, is it going to be the carbon and the oxygen? And is it going to be the hydrogen or the oxygen? Okay. Um, anytime that we have an ionic compound that has a monatomic ion, then the oxidation number is just going to be the charge of that ion. Uh, anytime that we have an electrically neutral compound, we need to make sure that the oxidation numbers add up to zero, otherwise it would be charged. So, Whatever numbers we assign to carbon and oxygen, they need to add up to zero because there's no charge here. Same thing with the water, same thing with the methane, same thing with the oxygen. All right, so uh, anytime that we have just an atom or a, uh, a molecule that has just that has the same atoms uh, such as oxygen, gas, or ozone, then that means that the electron sharing is equal. There's no difference in electronegativity, or in this case, there is no sharing at all, then the numbers will be zero. Anytime you have an ion, so a monatomic ion, the oxidation number that you assign it is just the charge of the ion. So this would be plus one, this would be minus one. 
fluorine is always negative one. Remember, it's our most electronegative. It is only going to share one electron. Therefore, it will always be one. Oxygen is almost always negative two because it's going to want two electrons and it will, uh, it, it is the second most electronegative. So unless it is bonded to fluorine um, or unless it is a, in a peroxide um, molecule where we would have an oxygen bonded to another oxygen, but it would be uh, an ion here. Uh, then it would be negative one instead. But almost always oxygen will be minus two. And then anytime hydrogen forms a covalent compound uh, with something that is more electronegative than it, it will be positive one. This is the chart that I've made for you. Uh, it's pretty simple. Basically coming over from the noble gases, we have negative one because these guys only want one. We have negative two because these guys want two and we have negative three because these guys want three. However, it will vary quite a bit here. Um, so nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, they could have uh, different oxidation numbers. And same thing with really most of these. Uh, so our alkali metals and alkaline earth metals will be either positive one or positive two. That will not change. Uh, this column for the most part will be positive three. But once we get outside of that to where, you know, tit titanium's group and then vanadium's group, these ones will uh, vary quite a bit. Same thing with over here. So manganese will not always be positive seven. Chromium will not always be positive six. Same thing with phosphorus will not always be negative three. This is just the general trend, okay? This is a more comprehensive list where the numbers in red are gonna be the ones that are most commonly found, but the, these atoms can have oxidation states of anything that is within its box, okay? But for the most part, the ones that are red will be the ones that they commonly are. All right, so let's figure out what the oxidation number is, numbers are for us here, okay? So looking at our O2, we know that these are zero. That's nice and easy. Um, Okay, so the, the example that I have here in this slide though, right, for one that will not have zero is water. So we know that oxygen is almost always gonna be negative two and this, this one is not an exception, okay? Water is gonna be, have negative two as our oxygen. So if this is negative two. Remember, our molecule needs to come out to be uh, a sum of zero, okay? Because there is no charge. So if this is negative two, then that means that our hydrogen must add up to positive two. And since we have two of them, that means that each of the hydrogens will have a plus one. And that makes sense because hydrogen in a covalent compound will have plus one. So that works out very nicely. So with oxygen having a negative two, that means that it is in excess of two electrons because it's holding the two electrons from the hydrogens in the covalent bonds that it forms with them closer to it. Whereas the hydrogens lack one electron each because the one that they have in the bond is being held closer to the oxygen and therefore that will make it them uh, positively charged. Okay, they would be plus one. Okay, now let's look at the rest of them. As I said on the last slide, O2, these have covalent bonds, but they're sharing the electrons evenly because they're the same species. There's no electronegativity difference, therefore the charge is zero. Methane, however, okay, carbon, we know that its uh, electronegativity is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1. That means that the carbon is going to be the negatively charged and then hydrogen will be positively charged. We know that hydrogen in a covalent compound will be plus one. So since there are four of them though, 
Um, there's going to be four plus ones, making this altogether plus four. And since this is a neutral compound, the carbon must have a number that adds up with the plus four to make this come out to be zero. Therefore, carbon is going to be negative four. Now, with the carbon dioxide, oxygen is the more electronegative, and the oxygen is uh, going to be negative two. Uh, so there are two of them, so that's negative four. Therefore, the carbon must add up to give us an overall charge of zero. So that makes our carbon plus four. So negative two plus four, zero plus one, and then negative four. Now the question is, what has been reduced um, and what has been oxidized? Well, uh, hydrogen was plus one here and in the water, it's still plus one. So nothing is happening to our hydrogen. Carbon is going from as methane being negative four to in carbon dioxide being uh, uh, to being plus four. So that means that is going from negative four to plus four. Uh, it is losing electrons. So if it's losing electrons, then that means that it is being oxidized. Oxygen is going from zero uh, in oxygen to negative two in carbon dioxide. That means that it is going from zero to negative two. Gaining electrons, that means that it is going to be reduced. Okay, something to think about uh, that I think is helpful. Oxidation comes from oxygen being so electronegative that oxidation, when something is being oxidized, which can happen quite often using oxygen, that when it becomes oxidized, it is actually going to be uh, losing the electrons to the oxygen in the bonds that it forms. Um, so that, that is a really good way of remembering. All right, have a little bit of practice here. Try these ones out. Uh, don't forget about the charges. So we have NO3 minus, we have I3 minus. So don't forget about those charges and just figure that out on your own. Okay, and then same thing here, figure out what uh, these reactions are. Are they oxidation or are they reduction? And I will have answers for you later. Uh, now, we're going to take a look at full oxidation reduction reactions. So these do get a little complicated, but I will give you a step-by-step -step process that we can use essentially breaking it up into half reactions and then being able to put them together. So there are what are called oxidation, oxidizing and reducing agents. Basically the oxidizing agent would be the thing that oxidizes the thing that is being oxidized. And then the reducing agent would be the, the species that is reducing something else. Okay, you do not need to worry about them though, which is nice. All right, so, uh, in working out an oxidation reduction reaction, we need to assign the oxidation numbers. We need to figure out what the oxidation and reduction half reactions are. So then we would write out the oxidation half reaction and then write out the reduction half reaction. And in writing both those out, we need to make sure that we balance them, uh, balance the number of atoms and make sure that we include the electrons in writing out the half reaction. And then in putting them together, we need to make sure that we have the same number of electrons on one side as we do on the other. So anytime uh, the electrons do not completely cancel out, like saying that maybe in our oxidation reaction, uh, the, we have three electrons involved and in the reduction, we only have two. We need to make sure that we balance so that the electrons on one side of the arrow uh, cancel out with the same number of electrons on the other side, okay? So anytime the electrons do not completely cancel out, we'll have to multiply our entire reaction by a coefficient. All right, so we got a few practice ones. Um, in this one, we have aluminum 
and hydrochloric acid, and we are forming aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, so I want you to take these examples and I, I will write this out for you um, as a solution to help you out, um, to provide with you later, all right? But try to figure out uh, the oxidation numbers, try to figure out the oxidation and the reduction in half reactions, and then try to put them together to balance this all out. Same thing with our reaction here with cesium and tin, putting them together, try to figure out um, the oxidation numbers and then figure out the oxidation and reduction half reactions, balance them out with the electrons. And now we have uh, lead sulfide and oxygen, do the same thing here. All right, now to complicate it a little bit more, uh, basically it, we can do a redox reaction in both acidic and basic solutions, which will kind of help it to get going. Uh, the biggest difference here is that we would need to balance out the half reactions using water and uh, hydrogen ions. Uh, so for the oxidation half reaction, we would need to use water to help to balance out the oxygen. And then with the reduction, we would need to use hydrogen to balance out the hydrogens. All right. So in this one, we have uh, manganese. Uh, sorry, not, not manganese. Uh, we have manganate ions and, um, and then iron. And then in acid, we would react them together. So notice how we don't have oxygens here. We're gonna to need to fix that by adding in water and uh, hydrogen ions. Okay, so try that out on your own. This is a little difficult. So you might wanna wait until I write it out for you, but you can try it out on your own if you want. All right, same thing we can do this with basic solutions and it's just that when we balance out with hydrogen H plus, we need to remember that we don't actually have H plus. So we would need to then eliminate that with OH minus, which is what we would have with a basic solution. And it gets a little bit more complicated. So, um, you know, again, here's another practice problem, but I, I will also provide you with um, the solution for this as well. So pay attention for that. And at this point, we are at the end of the redox reactions. I hope this was helpful. And then when I give you the answers to these problems, when I have the ability to write them out, hopefully that will make all of this make a little bit more sense. Okay. But you're looking in a, for a redox reaction for a transfer of electrons. And that will be the indicator that we have a redox reaction going on. Okay, and that's all for 4.9, and that is all for unit four. We had a really, really fast week this week. This does not mean that this is the only time that we are gonna spend on unit four. We will certainly spend time on it when we get back from Christmas break, but this at least gives you a really good head start uh, leading into Christmas break.